Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, currently walking here in Jerusalem on a quick morning, very, very much morning hike. It's about 6 a.m. in local time. And according to the calendar, in the Jewish religious calendar, is amazingly helpful in this regard because it always lists the time of sunrise and it always lists the time of dawn. I thought I'd come up here to the Tayelet where I've been before, but this time I have my cool new toy, the DJI Ronin SC. You should be able to see behind me that beautiful sunrise. Absolutely gorgeous looking eastward there. And uh, this is Jerusalem in the morning. This place is actually, depending what time of day you go, it can be pretty empty. 6 a.m. is dawn, so I'm now two or three days back from my US trip, still pretty jet lagged. And um, But this is an amazing place to go walking. Where I'm actually gonna go today is the Sharover Promenade, uh, which is this little one kilometer stretch of uh, paving here in Jerusalem. It runs from the back of the Has Promenade, which is the better known promenade on the Tayelet, and it goes for one kilometer running along with this amazing view of the old city, which I'm just gonna swivel right now and show you. And it comes out by Abu Tor uh, Cinema City. So that's, it's a really nice walk, about one kilometer built in 1989, according to the internet. But, uh, and you get to see this amazing view over East Jerusalem slash Old City, which I'm gonna swivel my uh, my new toy, the DJI Ronin SC around, show you guys what I'm looking at here. Sunrise in Jerusalem. The way you get from the first part of the Tayelet, the Has Promenade, down to the Sharover Promenade, which is the lower part, is you're just gonna keep going, keep going down those stairs, and then, depending on which way you come into the Tayelet from, you'll get to this uh, beautiful um, path, very ornate, leading down towards the direction of the Old City, and Jabal Mokabar, and all those different places. And if you just keep going down, you'll get to like a series of paths that just intersect and you can actually explore all of these different levels. Um, there's some really, really interesting things over here. And just keep going down and you'll start seeing signs saying Sharover Promenade. And if you take it this way, um, you will get to come out in Abu Tor. So you can use it as a shortcut if you want to bypass the busy traffic on uh, Der Hebron or you can just go for a nice walk. This is one of the lookout points along the promenade. Unfortunately, this particular piece of signage has been kind of, uh, not sure if the face is the right word. Someone's just gone ahead and like grabbed one of the whole slabs out. Um, but nevertheless, you can see it's labeled with the different neighborhoods. So you can tell what you're looking at. For example, we have Abu Dis in front of us, the very concerning sounding Hill of Evil Council, Jabal Mukabar, Peace Forest and Governor House. And that's what you're looking at where the sun rises over in that direction is the end of the Tayelet and uh, where Unso is based in Government House. Uh, so some would say appropriately that it's called the Hill of Evil Council. 
So looking at you have these amazing views all over the old city and you can see just in front of me what we're looking at here is the old city that's the Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa Mosque and uh, the holiest site in Judaism Har Habayt and the western wall is all just spread out right in front in this amazing morning view and just in front of that you've got this lovely lush grass green verdant area there's actually some places here that you can go and have a picnic some people would use this on uh, Shabbat uh, the Jewish day of rest, uh, some sp spots here for picnics and actually I think that this particular uh, promenade, this part of the Tayelet is kind of underexplored and underwalked. Um, as you can see I'm just about the only person here, albeit at 6 in the morning. So I'm just back from a trip to the US, I was there for about uh, three weeks, went to NYC went to Wellfleet, my first time in Cape Cod, went to the amazing town of Storrs, Connecticut, um, and then went down to Dallas. And I went on this trip basically to see my in-laws. Uh, my wife is originally from Dallas and her family is, her father is originally from Storrs, so that, that was why we went to Storrs. It's kind of weird to be back, it's an adjustment period. But I'm really glad to be making these videos. I picked up some really, really nice kit while I was over in the US, uh, just compared to trying to source stuff in Israel so much easier when you can use services like Amazon to just deliver stuff right to your door overnight. So I'm looking forward to getting into this new hobby of mine, making videos. Now I'm just doing this for fun, just kind of a something I've always wanted to kind of get into. Um, I particularly enjoy the kind of technical aspect of it, learning about sound, lighting, as you can see. I'm looking at myself at the monitor, you can't really see me, I have so much to learn. But uh, living in Jerusalem is cool and I feel I've been living in this city now for seven years and I've been started to really feel that for living in such an amazing place in the world you kind of get wrapped up in uh, you know normal life and working and paying taxes and paying your bills and one of the things I wanted to do or one of the reasons why I wanted to start a YouTube channel was to give myself an excuse to go out and be a bit more adventurous. So if you're watching this channel and you've always wanted to see something or somewhere in Jerusalem uh, drop me a comment and uh, if I can make it happen I will. No promises, but I'll try. Time for a mini Amazon review. This thing you are looking at, this Europec backpack, is literally the greatest thing, one of the greatest things I've ever owned. Uh, 30 bucks or something like that on Amazon, maybe more like 50. But I was looking for ages for like a really beefy backpack. This guy is a 50 liter backpack. It says it's TSA approved so you can bring it. And if you're looking for something to fit the DJI Ronin SC, which can be something of a challenge because it's a big piece of gear, uh, this guy is just incredible. As you can see, I've got a couple of uh, monopods and tripods stashed away here. And that's where I'm actually keeping the Ronin when it's not in use. This whole backpack compartment, there's a second compartment. Uh, I've got a couple of microphones and cameras there and you've even got space to keep your sunglasses in your wallet so if you're looking for a bag big enough that it is beefy enough that it will take it in one of the compartments so uh, yeah if you're looking for a backpack for the Ronin consider getting the Europec this item here on the shower of a promenade is labeled Sculpture pour la paix and I'm guessing that what this is in uh, this plaque is referring to is this interesting looking structure here uh, this guy, if I if, believe I'm not mistaken, is listed on Google Maps, you can see what I'm looking at here. And it's this uh, interesting structure here, just beneath a tree on the Sherova Promenade. This is a really popular tour site because of the fact that the old city is so visible. And uh, as well as that, the city of Jerusalem has these uh, water sprinklers that are primarily working on the lawn, or that's what they're intended to do, I assume. Uh, but they're useful because if you want to get a bit of a sprinkle yourself while you're passing by, I'm recording this in early August and even at this early time in the morning it is insanely hot here so the plants and the grass are getting some uh, badly needed water. Just towards the top of the Haas Promenade, Showover Promenade, there is this quite eye-capturing uh, memorial. It says here Departure and Expulsion Memorial and this is actually commemorating the 850,000 Jews uh, who were forcibly expelled from Arab lands and Iran, it says. 
um, and the Knesset instituted a departure and expulsion Memorial Day. This particular memorial was donated by the Jewish American Society for Historic Preservation with support from the World Sephardi Federation, the City of Jerusalem and the Jerusalem Foundation. You can see the sculptor and the various uh, patrons and supporters of this project and this is it right here.